In this lesson, we're going to learn how to draw cubic graphs. So if you're in a test and you are asked to draw a cubic graph, a cubic graph is something that does that, okay? So it turns, it usually turns twice, and it usually has three x-intercepts. Of course it can change, but that's the basics. So, how do we draw a cubic graph? Well, let's look at this graph and see what we have. We have x-intercepts, we have a y-intercept, we have turning points, so I'm just going to call that TP, and that's about it. You also want to put your inflection point, remember that's the point where it switches from concave down to concave up, or vice versa, so we'll also go and find that. Once you have those things, you can then draw the graph. It does not matter in which order you do that. So the basics are, how do we find y-intercepts? Well, I'm hoping that some of you at home are saying, oh, to find y-intercepts, you just make x equal to zero. That is correct. How do we find turning points? Well, remember, turning points are points on the graph where the gradient is zero. How do we find the gradient? Well, that's the first derivative. So you'll take the first derivative and you'll make that equal to zero. The point of inflection, well, that's the point where the second derivative is equal to zero. And then x-intercepts, well, that's where you make y equal to zero. But this one's a little complicated because in grade 12, we have to work out three of the x-intercepts. And it's a bit of a weird method. And I'm briefly going to go over that method now with you, with you guys now. If you're still struggling with that, then please purchase the course on Factor and Remainder Theorem. In that course, I explain in detail how to work out the x-intercepts of a cubic graph. In the whole process of drawing cubic graphs, this is the most challenging part, okay? And in the next videos, I'm going to do a couple of examples with you guys and go through the drawing process. But the most challenging part is the x-intercept. So remember, to find x-intercepts, you make y equal to 0. So we start off like that. Now what you want to do is, remember, we're trying to find, we want to find three x-intercepts. Unfortunately, you have to guess the first one. So what you do is you keep choosing different values of x that you plug into this equation until you get a 0 on the left-hand side. So let's start by plugging in minus 1, for example. So it would say minus 1, minus 3 times minus 1. So you see, so wherever there's an x, I'm plugging in minus 1 because I'm guessing that the first answer is minus 1. You then go type all of that in on the calculator, and that gave us 10. So unfortunately, that one does not work. The fastest way would be to open a little template like this on your calculator where you can just go plug in different values for x. So for example, I'm going to try the x value of 1 next. So what you do is you just backspace and you just keep going for, and you just put in a 1 and you say equals. Ah, there we get an answer of 0. So the first answer for our x-intercepts is 0. I mean is 1. So if your x answer is 1, then in bracket form, you have to remember that that means x minus 1. Remember, because if I asked you to solve this equation, you would say, oh, well, x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 1. So notice that if x is equal to 1, then in bracket form, it must be x minus 1. Okay, now here's where this method gets a little bit weird. We know that if you had to divide or if you had to take x minus 1 out of this expression over here, you would be left with some type of trinomial. So we're just going to call it ax squared plus bx plus c. And the goal is to try find a, b, and c. So a and c are very easy. If you had to, try, if you had to multiply these two brackets together, where would you get x to the power of 3? We'll take some time at home and think about that, but the only place that that would happen is when you multiply these two terms together. So if you want those two terms to be the same as this one over here, well, that means that a would have to have a value of 1. Now, the next thing is, where would we end up with a constant term like that if we were multiplying these two terms together? Well, that would only happen over here with that minus 1 and when you multiplied it with that. So we want minus 1 times by c and that should give us a value of 8. Well that means that c should be negative 8. 
Now with the B value, here's where it's a little bit more complicated. So you are allowed to choose if you want to use the X squares or if you would like to choose the X's. It's completely your choice. So let's choose the X squares. Well, we want the answer to be minus 3. So we want minus 3. Okay, now what you've got to do is you've got to ask yourself, if you had to multiply these two brackets together, you'd obviously have to multiply it would take quite a long time but where would you get x squares it's gonna happen twice it would happen when you multiply this x with that term over there because that's gonna have an x squared but it would also happen over here so let's do the one that we know already and that's just minus 1 times by x squared so that's just gonna be negative 1 x squared and then the x and the bx will just give us positive b x squared now we can just ignore the x squares and so we end up with minus 3 equals to minus 1 plus b. And then you just solve for b, and so b is going to be equal to negative 2. And that's the most difficult part complete. Remember, the goal of this exercise is to get three x-intercepts. So now what we need to do is factorize this part as far as we can. So that's going to give us 0 equals to x minus 1. This part could factorize as x minus 4 and x plus 2. If this part cannot factorize, then use the quadratic formula, which is shown over there. Because the goal is not to find three brackets, the goal is to find three answers. So the three answers are going to be x equals to 1, or x equals to 4, or x equals to negative 2. Now you have three places on your graph, and those are your three x-intercepts, and then you could draw the graph together with the inflection point, turning points, and y-intercept. In the next video, and a few videos after that, we are going to be practicing how to draw these graphs.